from MTN, the Montana Television Network. This is Face the State. Good morning and welcome to Face the State and to another in our series of debates between the candidates running for statewide office in Montana this year. I'm Mike Dennison, MTN's chief political reporter, and I'll be your host and moderator today. We're just five weeks from Election Day, and today we're joined by the two candidates running for state superintendent of public instruction. Republican Elsie Arnson, a recently retired elementary school teacher and state senator from Billings. And Melissa Romano, an award-winning elementary school teacher from Helena. We tossed a coin to see who gets the first question, and that will be Senator Arnston. Our format today, I'll be posing a question to one of the candidates. She'll have 30 seconds to respond. The other candidate will have 30 seconds for rebuttal. And then a final 30 seconds for the first candidate to answer that rebuttal or expand on their answer. We also have a one minute close at the end of the debate. So let's get started with the first question, which goes to Senator Arnson. Uh, we'll start out easy. Uh, tell me, why are you running for this office and, and, and what's the responsibility of this office? Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Great to be here, Mike. Thank you. Elsie Arnson out of Billings, born and raised in Montana, fourth generation Montanan. Uh, I have a degree in economics that came from uh, University of Montana, so that's a shout out there. And it's all about numbers and budget. Um, education is $1.8 billion in our state budget. So understanding budgets, as I have as a state senator now and a legislator for 12 years, formulating our very precious tax dollars that come from our communities up to our capital. So it is about that. I'm excited about putting local control. I'm excited about using my energy and effort after 23 years in the classroom going forward. Thank you. Ms. Romano. Thank you. Uh, I am not a career politician. I'm a, an award-winning classroom teacher, and I'm a very proud public school teacher. I offer a fresh and a new perspective to this office, and I believe that I um, have the passion, commitment um, to do the job. I look forward to um, helping all students. I do believe that this is a position that's for all students, not just some, and I believe my opponent and I differ in that area. If I can say, surely, this is about students, and if I've watched for 30 years, this office has been held by one political party. In fact, it's been held by a special interest group, and I can tell you the special interest group has not been our kids. It is about local control. Our communities in Montana are very unique, and that's where we need to have education happen. It doesn't happen in Helena with special interest groups. It happens in our communities. Thank you. We'll come back to some of the, some of the things that you, that you mentioned, Senator Arnson. Let's uh, go to Ms. Romano. Let's talk about, um, is there a direction that Montana schools, public schools should go that they are not going, and how would you take them in that direction? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I am advocating for all children. I want all children to have the resources and tools they need to learn. That being said, I would like to provide a plan for public preschool for our earliest learners. I want to make sure that they start on a path to success early. I also want to take a look at our school's infrastructure. We have 70% of our school buildings in Montana that were built before 1970. We need to take a hard look at this. I also want to make sure, like I said, that all kids, whether it's special needs students or our highest achieving students, our four-year-olds or our 19-year-olds, that they have the tools they need to learn. Thank you. Senator Arson. Yes, um, that sounds like a very political question and something that a legislator might look at. Um, I know that uh, public preschool, when I've done my many, many travels around the state and talked to so many teachers and, and superintendents in, in our rural communities as well as in our urban, urban communities, it's not necessarily on the top of their list. And I would feel that, yes, we need to take a look at infrastructure. I need a safe, warm, dry place for our kids, but I can't necessarily have a brand new set of kids come into our buildings if I don't have infrastructure taken care of. I know that I've got some skills ready to go. Thank you. Ms. Romano. Again, this is a race about students. This is a race about all students. At the end of the day, I do think that Ms. Arnston's votes in the legislature make it clear that she's not for all students. I am for all students. I want to make sure that they have the tools necessary to learn. I've got the passion, commitment, and the dedication to do that. Uh, Senator Arnston, she mentioned your votes in the legislature. Let's talk about um, one of those votes. You voted several times for bills that would create tax credits or vouchers for 
people sending their kids to private schools, including religious schools. Why is that a good idea? Oh my goodness. Well, if it is about all of our kids, and Montana's kids, and in our Constitution, that's what it says, that it needs, we need to have opportunities for all of everyone's potential. So in regard to that, it is about our public schools. That's what these bills were about. It wasn't necessarily just about segmenting one level of education. It also included public school. I'm extremely passionate about public schools, teaching for 23 years, and as a legislator, understanding the process of how we're going to get things done in Helena. Thank you. Ms. Romano, your response? Yes, our public tax dollars need to be supporting public schools. I would never support bills that would funnel taxpayer dollars away from our public schools, taking valuable money and resources away from public schools. Public money should serve public schools. The fact is, is that our public schools are doing a great job. We have innovative teachers. We have lots of choice happening, whether you're in Helena and you can access Montessori programs, or you're in Billings and you can access CTE, or you're in any small town in Montana and you can access the Digital Academy for free. Montana's full of innovation and choice, and I'm gonna stand behind that. Thank you, uh, Senator Arson. Do you have any, anything else well, to say? Well, of course, this is about all of our kids. You can't necessarily say that we don't have mobility in our buildings. We have mobility within our districts. We have mobility that are within our state. So these students that flow in and out, we need to make sure that it's all students that we build up. I'm 100% public school. I was born and raised in Montana with public schools. My dad was a public um, high school teacher, and, and my mother was a special ed teacher in public school. In fact, my mother was president of one of the largest teachers union that we have in the state. It is about putting our kids forward, and this office has not done that yet. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the uh, Teachers Union. Let's talk about that. Ms. Rom Ms. Romano, of course, you're a member of the Teachers Union, MEA, MFT. You made some allusion to that as a special interest. MEA, MFT strongly supports you in this race. I'm just wondering, is there any issue you can name where you would stand opposed to MEA, MFT? Uh, thanks for the question. I believe that Ms. Arson is also, has also been a member of MEAMFT. Um, I can't say for sure right now what that would be, but I can say for sure that I am a proud member, um, and I'm proud of the professional development that the union has, that I've gotten for the union. I don't think I would be here today um, as, a, as an award-winning classroom teacher if it wasn't for some of the excellent professional development I've gotten from the union. I'm looking forward to this October and seeing the, all of my teacher friends and colleagues at the uh, teacher convention. Uh, that's a great time and professional development is key. Thank you. Senator Arson. For sure. As a member of the teachers union, because that is uh, what is required and you do, you do receive uh, development. But what I've noticed in all the other experience that I've had is that they have become so political and they're not for Montana kids. They are not standing up for what should happen within our Montana schools. They're not about local control. They want central control in Helena. You're looking at, a, at an individual who has walked in shoes of 23 years in public schools and wanting to make sure that all of our kids get educated. Uh, the union is going to be at the table, but I need to make sure that parents and communities have also a choice. Thank you. You'd like to respond? Yes. I will always work with uh, public education stakeholders and those interested in public education. Uh, right now, MEA MFT is one of those stakeholders. Uh, I am proud of the work that they're doing. I'm proud that they are fighting for public school children. Uh, I plan to do that in, in this office, and I look forward to doing that. Thank you. This question, of course, goes to Senator Arnson. Uh, Montana has one of the lowest, or perhaps the lowest, average starting teacher pay in the nation, about $28,500. Should that be increased? And if so, how would you do it? Well, research shows, and we all know, especially, and I'm, and I'm sure you would also agree that the teacher is the number one indicator of success of a student when it comes to being in the classroom. Because we're a very rural state, we have a disparity across our state when it comes to what our salaries are. But I can tell you that we are not the lowest of the low. And the people that come into education have passion. They're there for the right reasons. They're not necessarily there for the money. But I do know that I have the opportunities to look to see how we can do a health care pool. Time's how we up, can, I'm sorry. Thank you. Let's, let's, Ms. R Ms. Romano. Thank you. Yes, K-12 funding is a very complex issue. I agree with that. Uh, 
whether it's too low, I, I don't know that I can say that right now. Would I like teacher salaries to be higher? Yes, as I've traveled and listened to uh, folks all across this state, that's the number one thing I hear about is that they want their teachers to be paid well. I do too. One of the things I'm interested in is a statewide teacher mentor program to uh, keep teachers here um, regardless of pay because K-12 is a very complex issue. I do believe teacher mentorship would help along in that way as well. Um, Senator Arson. Thank you. My, my, my whole expertise is to help our local school districts help in that whole budgeting process. A majority of it goes into people, and we are a people business. Education is that. So understanding what that budget is, allowing monies to flow between the different silos of their budgets that are now is something that I'm going to offer with more flexibility so that they can offer teachers, especially those beginning teachers, those with passions, into our classrooms in Montana. Thank you. This question goes to Ms. Romano. Um, I'm wondering about the common, new Common Core standards, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, do you support those Common Core standards, and why or why not? Yes, thank you. I do support them, and I think uh, one of the words that often gets missed when addressing these standards is Montana. These are Montana Common Core standards. They are Montana made. Many Montana teachers gave input to drafts. I was one of those teachers that did. We also added Indian Education for All. They're high expectations for our students. It's what we want our students to know and to be able to do. Who wouldn't want high expectations? Senator Arson. Oh, I can tell you, it was a top down. It came in from somewhere else. It may have had a little bit of discussion in our capital, but it didn't get out into our other uh, 411 school districts that we had. And some school districts have embraced this. They put monies into this. They put effort into this. But as a whole, there's been challenging. I've got two out-of-state vendors right now that we're held hostage with. We can't have that. And the other problem with the leadership and the lack of leadership that I should say, we hadn't done any revitalization or rethinking of our standards for 15 to 20 years. And then this comes into play. Let's stop there and you have a response. I, I disagree with my opponent. This is not a top, this is not top down. This is Montana made. Uh, I sat on those committees and helped uh, give input and feedback. Uh, many teachers' voices were recognized, and I feel very valid that that did happen. It was a transparent process. I think it was a good process. Um, and ultimately, these are standard. These standards are good for kids. At the end of the day, what's good for kids is what I can get behind, and I'm, that's what I'm always going to do. If I could just offer real quickly, I know uh, we'll, 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 for sure. We'll, we'll come back. Of we'll, course. We'll stay on Common Core, and this, yes. this question is direct to you now. I believe you voted for a bill that would have essentially repealed Common Core mm -hmm. standards last session. I'm just wondering if you're superintendent, what are you going to do about these standards? Are, are you going to uh, advocate for their repeal or what? Well, the ones that came into play were our math and our reading. And I, I can tell you that as other educators and other people that are in our communities and our parents as well, 60% of our kids are not proficient in math and 40% are not proficient in our reading scores, that is not okay with me. And I know it's not okay with Montana. So it's important that we re-look at that. I'm going to be one that is going to say, are these standards appropriate for what is happening in Montana? And if they are not, then we need to revitalize them and we need to rethink. It cannot be standards that happen in Helena. They need to be in our local communities. We Thank need, you, a, we need to have more of a connection with parents and communities. Ms. Ron, are you about Yes, I want to address that sh uh, she brought up the assessment and some proficiency scores, and I want to talk a little bit about that because um, we should never be looking at our kids by one data point. I think that we need to take a look, a wide angle lens, and take a look at multiple measures when we're looking at our kids. And I think if my opponent was in the classroom and had given this test, she would see how different this kind of assessment is. We're no longer asking students to pick up a number two pencil and fill in bubbles. We're asking students to think critically, justify their reasoning, and then communicate that. It's a much different test. Scores are going to be lower this first time around. Thank you. Yes, so as someone awesome. who also wants to honor teachers, because as I said, teachers are the number one indicator of success of a student, we need to make sure that teachers are trained within what is going on with these standards. That's not happened. Some communities embraced that and did go forward with that, but I did teach the standards. I've watched them with other teachers, and there's been a lot of challenges with that. So we need to do a better job educating, not just our students, but inviting parents to that table as well. Thank you. 
Um, this question goes to uh, Ms. Romano. We talked a little bit about this, about um, the success of students in our system. Right now, high school graduates from Montana, uh, rather high, more than a fourth of them have to take remedial classes in um, math and English when they get to college. I'm wondering if you think that's acceptable, and if not, what you as the leader of the public school system would do to correct that. Sure. Uh, you know, I have four children of my own, and so I know what uh, taking remedial classes would look like for my family's pocketbook if one of them needed to do that. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a fan of that. I do think that investing in our kids today will lead to a stronger economy and a brighter future. I think that if we can invest in our young kids, our four-year-olds of public preschool, that's a step in the right direction in the long run, making our students college and career ready and ultimately will affect our remedial, rate, remedial rates in, in universities. Senator Arson. Yes. Uh, this job as state superintendent is kindergarten through 12, but it's a whole system that wraps around that. And we could talk about um, making sure that students are ready for kindergarten, and that's more of a dialogue at the local level. Then we have, when they cross that stage and we get a graduation, we get a diploma, we need to make sure that there's value in that. I have fabulous teachers that are in our high school, but there is a disconnect in middle school, and we need to make sure that we shore up that element in middle school. I'd like to offer a counseling initiative that would make sure that I've got mental health that's happening in our middle school to make sure that they're at the light of the end of the tunnel. Your time's up. Sorry. Yes. We'll come back. And you yeah, have a I, to, to, yes, to, I don't disagree uh, with my opponent. I do want our high school diplomas to be valuable. Um, I am very proud of the work with Graduation Matters Montana. That's something that I would like to continue and expand. I think partnerships are key when we're looking at our high school graduates. At the end of the day, I want more students to be proficient. I want more students to graduate. I want them to be college and career ready. That means that we're going to invest in them early and often and continue to do it and, and provide supports all along the way. Thank you. Senator Arnson, we'll kind of come back to the same subject a bit. You brought it up before about the, uh, the, test, the test results and how, how many students are not proficient in science mm -hmm. and English. I'm wondering if you think that is any way an indictment of the system or the new standards, and how do we achieve a better result, assuming that you do want to achieve a well, better result? Well, the test score, that one little point in time, is a summative over everything. It's an important part, but the formative tests that happen every single along the way are what recorrect what happens in the classroom with the teacher. And that is so important. So we need to make sure that our test scores validate that quality educator in that classroom. At the end, at the end of all this discussion, it is about making sure that these individuals that go into our communities have something that they can be very, very proud of. And that is what our public school investment is about. Thank you. Ms. Romano, your response? Yes, so uh, in regards to the test, could it be better? Possibly. Could we do more? Possibly. I do think the information gained from this new test is helpful for parents, students, teachers, all stakeholders. I think that as, this, as we all become more familiar with this test, our scores are going to dramatically increase. We've already seen increases from the first year. At the end of the day, I want our kids to be able to think critically and justify their thinking and be able to communicate that. That's what this test is about. It is testing high expectations. We want our kids to be ready for college and career, and that's what this test is helping to do. Senator Arson, anything to add to that? I can, for sure. Again, since it had been 15 to 20 years since we have redone any of our state standards and then all of a sudden we have the common core that is here with our math and our reading as well as we have new science ones that are coming health and art what i would like to do is to make sure that these do fit montana we need to relook at them we can't just say that it is done and that we're over with it and then we go on to something else that's not what this is about this is making sure that when a student enters kindergarten and goes all the way through that they have a wraparound effect from everyone that is a teacher within that system. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Romano, this goes to you. Um, now, the pay for most public school teachers is based on longevity and education. Would you support introducing any form of merit pay into the system for teachers? If not, why not? Yes, thanks for the question. So uh, I have actually had this question before from several people. Um, it's one that I enjoy because I believe that in our current system, we have some um, 
awards or rewards or some people call it merit pay for teachers and it's called national board certification it's a very rigorous process and teachers who go through that process not only get exceptional professional development at the end they do get a monetary um, amount of money some from the state some from um, their district depending on what their district is i think that's something that i can definitely get behind because that's good for teachers and good for kids senator Arson, thank you view? quality teachers mean that we pay for their worth we, I know so many that are in our classrooms and in the K-12 system and in our higher education as well. It is about paying for them for what they're worth. But I can share with you, longevity doesn't necessarily mean that experience makes that better teacher. You need to have a look at that every time. That's why this office recertifies teachers every five years, to make sure that I've got that quality individual in front of that young mind. Thank you. Ms. Ramon, anything to add to that? Yes, uh, I do know one thing for sure when it comes to teacher salary and pay. You can't increase pay when you have a record of voting to decrease public funding like my opponent does. I would never vote to, or I would never advocate to decrease funding for our schools. This is about investing in our kids today for a brighter future and a, a more opportunities for students. Thank you. Senator Narson, let's go right to that question. Uh, during your legislative career, you voted for a variety of tax cuts and against some bills that would have increased public funding or state funding for public schools, such as the 2000 fix to the, in response to the Supreme Court ruling. Uh, are you an adv advocate for strong funding of public schools? Oh, well, of course. And not only an advocate for strong funding for schools, but it's allowing those local districts to be able to have the flexibility within their funding formula to make sure what is right for those kids that are in their community. One size does not fit all. And right now, coming from Helena and coming from this office, from these previous superintendents, it has been such a top-down mandate. My job is to open it up and to listen to what these school districts all rely on. It is about trusting our trustees. Those are our local elected officials. Thank you. Ms. Romano, your response. I disagree. I do not believe that she is an advocate for public school. This is the Office of Public Instruction, not private instruction. You can't sit in the legislature and vote to cut funding, support bills that uh, would funnel money away from our public schools and our children, um, and say that you're an advocate for public schools. I believe my experience in the classroom, my dedication to professional development, making sure our students are learning more and being the very best, shows that I am a true advocate for public schools and making sure our kids get the resources they need, they need to be successful. So, in our sense, you'd like to respond. Well, of course. I can tell you that being a state senator and being a legislator, when you look at the entire state budget and everything that goes on to that, there's a lot of pieces that fall into play. I've always been a supporter of public school as a member of the union, as, uh, like I said, with my parents, so heavily engaged in education. And I've got a granddaughter, Harper, who just started kindergarten. And all those other Harpers out there, it's very important. But to make that decision that I don't support public school is disingenuous. It is extremely about making sure that public schools across our state have what they need and allowing flexibility in our communities. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Romano, uh, this is a partisan race. Uh, tell me why you're a Democrat instead of a Republican and why does or should that matter in this race? Well, I, that's a great question. Thank you. So I am a Democrat. Uh, and as, particularly when it comes to this race, I believe that Democrats have had a strong history of standing up to public education and fighting for all students, not just some students. Uh, I believe that every student, regardless where they live or how much money their parents make, should be given the tools that they need to learn. I'm not sure at the end of the day that I could say that for my um, Republican counterpart. This is about opportunities for every single child. Uh, will the Senator Arson tell us why she's a Republican and whether that should matter in this well, race? I'm, I'm a Republican. I'm a, a fiscal conservative. And I'm also pro-life. And I have also come into the legislative realm after walking a strike line, being part of that union, understanding that it is about families and it's about community. And looking at all those different segments that deal with how we fund who Montana is. I am very proud to be a Montanan born my whole, raised my whole life here in Montana. And I can tell you it is about our students. It's about honoring our teachers. It's also about honoring communities because communities know best about their kids. Thank you. Any more from you on this question? No. Uh, Senator Arnston, one more question about your, uh, your, your voting record. 
Last session, I believe you voted against the uh, state funding for preschool in Montana. Uh, why did you vote that way? And we have many other states around, this, uh, around the, the country that do this, but you think Montana should not. Tell us why. Well, I can tell you, I'm very much concerned about the students that we have in our public schools right now, kindergarten through 12th grade. We need to make sure that we shine a bright light on their success. Also, as I've done my journey across the state, I've talked to many, many superintendents and school leaders and teachers. I need a warm, safe, dry environment for them. And I'd love to make sure that our buildings, our infrastructure shored up. How can we put a whole brand new group of young minds, three and four year olds, in buildings that are crumbling? There needs to be a priority here. My priority is not on adding a new We're, group I'm going to stop you there. We'll, we'll come back in sure. rebuttal, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Romano? Yes. Uh, Thank you. Statewide, yes. how, do you, how do you stand here? Thank you. Uh, I do believe in investing in our young kids today to make a stronger and brighter future tomorrow. I've taught kindergarten. I've seen firsthand the positive impacts that a preschool experience can have. We want our students to come to school ready to learn. We know that when students are able to read at grade level at the end of third grade, they're much more likely to graduate high school on time. That's a benefit to everybody. We want our students to be college and career ready and be productive citizens. We need to be investing in them early up four years old. Well, so can, I, please I can, continue. yes, for sure. In my journey and in all the things that I've done in Montana um, and in my community, preschool has not really come up. It's not part of the agenda. It's not on the top priority list. So I would say totally out of touch with what we need, where we need to invest. We need to invest in those students that are there right now. If we are going to make sure that we have people that are part of our communities and they're healthy and they have things to add within that and go on to secondary education, that's what we need to do. We need to invest in those students and those minds. Thank you. And uh, we come now to the time for our closing statements and we'll start out with Ms. Morano. Thank you. As a product of public schools, my, and also my four children attend public schools, and as a very proud public school teacher, I want to make sure that our students have every single opportunity they can to succeed. This is, about an this is about opportunities for every student. The superintendent has a tremendous impact on the education of our children, a tremendous impact on the quality of education, as well as our economic future. I'm looking forward to bringing my passion, commitment, and dedication that I had in the classroom and with my students to the Office of Public Instruction. I want, I'm interested in looking at infrastructure, providing a plan for pre-K, and making sure that all students have the resources they need to learn. If you're interested and if you want to protect public education and believe in your public schools, I'd appreciate your vote in November. Thank you. Senator Arnson, your closing statement. Thank you. Great opportunity today. I appreciate that. Um, as someone who is a fourth generation Montanan and someone who understands public, the role of public education, and it's not just about when they're in school, it's about afterwards. 23 years that I've spent in the classroom, shoulder to shoulder with other teachers and administrators, putting parents and kids first, that's what this is about. And then I've been honored, honored to be in the legislature and as a state senator, piecing that budget together funding public education, making sure that it is about all children's, all children's success. So for 30 years, for 30 years, this has been tightly handled by one political party. It's about time that if you want different results, you're going to vote for something different. My name is Elsie, and I'm extremely honored to be here. As public school needs to be going forward, we need to make sure that it is about our kids. It is about local control and it's about those trustees and all of those valued teachers that we have across our state in our very unique 411 school districts. Thank you very much. I'm Elsie Arnson, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you both the candidates for joining us this morning on this debate. Next week on Face the State, we'll have MTN analyst David Parker back to, to, to dis with a discussion about I-182, the initiative to lift some restrictions on medical marijuana. Once again, thank you for joining us on Face the State. The State, a presentation of MTN, the Montana Television Network.